This is Pamela Ray Schuler. She's a stand-up comedian, and we're about to watch stand-up that's medically relevant, and she's gonna explain it to you, and I'm gonna explain the jokes. Let's get started. Pee-woop! I am fully medicated now. Anybody else? Antidepressants? Medication? Yeah. I don't know how I feel when comedians make that joke. Why? You shouldn't ever be upset that you're taking a medicine but celebrating that you're taking it? No, it normalizes it. How but, many people are gonna see this and be like, oh my gosh, I don't need to be ashamed. Yes, but then how many people are gonna request medicines that they don't yet need? And then it's up to people like you. That's true, that's a lot of weight on my <laughs> Doctors. Well, no, that's, it, it points to the fine line between breaking the stigma and not spreading misinformation. Or celebrating who she is and what she's going through. I'm not anything against celebration. I thought I was on an antidepressant. It turns out I'm not. It turns out I'm actually on a mood stabilizer that they use as an antidepressant. Fun fact about prescription drugs. Everything they prescribe, they actually use for like four different things. That's true, and not only do we use it for four different things, some don't even have an FDA approval for those things. Like they haven't been adequately studied, so we use them off label. I know that because I've been on so many meds for Tourette's that are not for Tourette's because a study showed that it might help Tourette's. When I was 12, I wore the nicotine patch because oh. there was a study. Did it help? No, it, it just made me Jones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we had to try something. You're out of control otherwise. So you don't really know what your deal is <laughs> until you find a combo that works and then Google all your pills by yourself. So after years of trial and error, I finally found a combination of things that worked for me. I don't want people to try it on themselves yeah. because a lot of these medications have really bad interactions. So you have to have a thorough knowledge of how they interact with each other. Like if a patient of mine is on three psychoactive medications, mm -hmm. I get them a psychiatrist ASAP. Okay, that's smart. Because it's just, there's so many interactions that I'm not well versed enough to know how, that's, to have the experience to know how they fight. That's important. And six months ago, I decided to Google it, because what the hell? And it turns out that everything I'm taking is primarily used for bipolar disorder. Hmm. So I went back to my psychiatrist and I was like, hey, Do we think? <laughs> we. At least team-based. And she was like, oh, yeah. They never had that discussion before? That's terrifying to me. How many things do you think my therapist thinks I have and just hasn't told me? But why would they not tell you? Do, do you know. ask? Oh, all the time she'll write something down and I'll be like, what are you writing? But see, like, I hate labels because the labels aren't really for the benefit of the patient. They're for the insurance company, the legal stuff. But really, a person is not a diagnosis. So I agree with you 100%. I think so often, especially when we work with kids, we're always trying to find a diagnosis instead of just like getting to know someone for who they are mm -hmm. um, and treating symptoms of things we're seeing. But I do think sometimes knowledge is power. Do you think it could become a self-fulfilling prophecy where you think I am X, so I must behave as X? Yes. So that's also Yeah, But I like, I, yeah, yeah. So it, it's, it's, like it's a, individualized. It's a balancing act. I said, you really didn't know that I was bipolar. And she goes, no, of course not. We thought we were treating anxiety and depression. And I said, okay. Cause this kind of feels like a putting your dog's medication in cheese situation. <laughs> When I was in high school, I was like, Dad, I think I'm depressed. And he was like, you just need some protein. Get a scoop of peanut butter. That's like every health influencer on TikTok. <laughs> health influencer. I think, yeah. It's, <laughs> Buy my protein! Or it's take a Buy my protein. hormone! <laughs> You think I'm making that Mine up? would be amazing. <laughs> yeah? Do you want to buy some of my hormones, Mike? <laughs> yes. But yours aren't hormones, they're horny bones. <laughs> no. Stand-up comedy. <laughs> no, hey. you're canceled for that. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason you're a doctor. Yeah, who makes jokes? Yeah, there's a lot of dads out there just white knuckling it through life right now. <laughs> Clinging to a jar of chunky jiff like it's the answer. Just a buoy in the storm. It'll pass. That's a joke with a lot of medical meaning behind it. Tell me more. Men will oftentimes experience their depression or show their depression to the world in different ways than what we describe traditionally in medical stuff. So for example, some will develop addiction mm -hmm. to going to the gym, to taking steroids and getting huge. Some will get a gambling addiction. Some will become abusive in their relationships. But really what they're experiencing is depression and they're acting out. Hmm. Look at me learning. Yeah. And that was interesting. So I was like actively listening. Yeah, that was good. I don't know if you were faking it, you're a really good actor. No, you know and... what I'm faking. <laughs> okay. My doctor comes in, he doesn't say hello, he doesn't say good morning, he just walks in, he points at me, which is super aggressive. Are doctors ever that aggressive to you? Sorry, I'm, he is so my type that that's all oh, I'm really? hearing right now. <laughs> smash or pass? Oh, smash! And he goes, do you want something for your hair? 
And I go, what? <laughs> and he goes, do you want something for your hair? And I go, I don't get it. <laughs> and he goes, has nobody told you that your hair's falling out? <laughs> and I was like, damn. No. It's a doctor roast. I went my whole life being okay with my face, and then a doctor said, um, how do you feel about your weak chin? <laughs> well, maybe you should do some squats. <laughs> and he goes, you weigh 245. And I go like, yeah, like I knew that. <laughs> and he goes, you weighed 230 last time you were here. Not exactly what I would call weight loss. <laughs> and I'm like, are we at a fucking <laughs> roast or something? See? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Old school doctors used to think this works. Then he says, you know, you're the fattest patient I've seen all day. No. And I go, it's 9.30 in the morning. No. I would do a murder. He's like, you know, we ran your blood work. It turns out your muscle enzymes are through the roof. And I go, yeah, man, like, I'm super strong. Like, how is that a problem? Well, muscle enzymes happen when there's, like, rapid <coughs> breakdown of the muscle. Okay. It's a condition called rhabdomyolysis. Spell it. it. No, R H A B O D O M Y O L Y S I S. Ding! No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I don't know. The myoglobin that's released actually can be nephrotoxic, so it's problematic to your kidneys. This happens when people who don't exercise for a while go and start exercising. Oh, okay. Or if people are found down, like elderly people, for a long period of time and their muscles breaking down. Or if you take a lot of drugs and you shiver a lot or something like that, mm -hmm. where you overuse your muscles. And you Do you use words with your patients like nephrotoxic? When I say nephrotoxic, I follow it up with kidney injury. Immediately after. My brain was still stuck on necrotophics. <laughs> Do you have a ring on your finger? And I go, yeah. And he goes, you're married. <laughs> and I go, yeah. And he goes, to a guy? <laughs> and I go, no. And he goes, oh, I thought you were gay. And I go, why? And he goes, hey, I'm just kidding. And I go, that's fine. He goes, but check it out. And he takes my chart and he shows it to me and he had written gay question mark on my medical chart. I really feel like this is a joke or a lie because a, a chart is a medical legal record. You're not gonna write gay question mark on it. Yeah, it'd be exclamation point. Unless, 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 unless he saw that Tom Segura is a comedian, he tried to be funny in a really poor attempt. To doctors out there, don't, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. But people will ask me dumb questions all the time. I'll get this one a lot. They'll be like, hey, Ryan. Is that genetic? <laughs> yes. Uh, because you see, my mom was Irish, and my dad was a lobster. <laughs> <laughs> kids are the worst, though. Oh, kids are the absolute worst, though, because kids don't have that filter. You know, if a kid says you're ugly, you're ugly. All right, deal with it. <laughs> Buy a hat. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but this little girl, after she saw me, and after she screamed, after she screamed, it was a big scream. Uh, which, side note, has led me to a new game that I play. Uh, now when I'm out in public and I see a child staring at my arms, I like to pretend that I'm discovering them for the first Not time, too. <laughs> Someone on the subway recently goes, you're short. And I go, <laughs> like, like, where'd the rest of me go? For four years, my wife and I couldn't get pregnant. Oh, I've heard this. And it was my fault. What's going on with you and Bina? You're like Indian Barbie and Ken. And I'm like, I know. And much like Ken. <laughs> well, because Ken is perfect. Has no. Yeah. I have art in my apartment. This is very much Pam art. And it's Barbie and Ken in a motel room and Barbie's on the bed. And the, Ken is standing there and they're both naked Barbies. And the caption just says, disappointed Barbie. Aww. A lot of doctors are my age. <laughs> And they're Indian, which means I might know them. <laughs> so we're sitting there in the waiting room at NYU, right? Door opens, nurse comes out. She's like, Dr. Gupta will see you now. I'm like, oh, oh, oh this better not be Arjun Gupta from Sacramento. <laughs> from then I hear a familiar voice. He's like, oh, son, man, hush. I'm like, this is Arjun Gupta from Sacramento. <laughs> is that his boy? I, I went to middle school together. He's a fucking idiot. <laughs> you know, he's not even an MD. He's a goddamn deal! Why is he so angry about that? I never understood He burned you through the computer! Yeah, but why? So this 
this dude is all up in my merchandise. He's like, oh, bro, I know what's wrong. I'm like, stop saying bro. He's like, son, oh. <laughs> you got too much blood down there. It's lowering your sperm count. So we're gonna do a dangerous surgery called varicocele repair. A varicocele is basically a swelling of your veins in your scrotum. We used to say like, if you feel that area, it feels like a bag of worms. Can you think of a more poop Thank explanation? Thank you so much for that visual. <laughs> that's, what, that's what they taught us in medical school. Still pulls out a trimmer. He goes, let me shave you down right now. <laughs> Let's do this right here, right now. I go, Archer, back up. I'm not ready. He goes, listen, man. If you don't get this surgery, you can't have kids, ever. I go, are you serious? Life gets very real when don't want becomes can't have. Isn't that right, Dios? He's so anti-Dio, which is funny because in this clip, the Dio ends up allowing him to conceive. Yeah, to be clear, I'm not at all anti-Dio. I'm, I'm pro- I, I, don't think, I don't think he's anti-Dio either. I think he's just making a joke. Yes. But it's just at the cost of doctors in the midst of a pandemic when doctors were on the front lines. That's like, totally fair. Terrible, like, look, as a comedian, you gotta know comedic timing. Yes. And if you're gonna make a joke about this? doctors, peak pandemic. Okay. My dermatologist said he needed to do a biopsy of a little uh, mole on the tip of my nose. I was about to say, you don't need a dermatologist in some cases. Like, I can do that, but not if it's on the face. Cause oh, I'm cause worried about scarring. Yeah, so like, wow, that sounds like it's gonna hurt. He said, don't worry, we're gonna numb it first with a painkiller. I said, how? He said, we're gonna puncture a sharp needle into the tip of your nose. When I work with patients and they need a small procedure done, mm -hmm. sometimes I say like, I think it might be best to go without anesthesia because the anesthesia might hurt more than the procedure. I had to get a little thing removed and she did the anesthesia, she gave the shot and then she started slicing and I started immediately crying and like You yelled. have to wait. And she goes, well, it takes 15 minutes to kick in. And I was like, yeah. Then wait 15 minutes. When and I did she my was annoyed that germ she rotation, you would inject patients with lidocaine, move on to the next patient, figure out what's going on, go back to that patient, do the procedure. Uh huh. Onaki. And at the hospital, I, I said, Excuse me, can I have pain medication? Because I am not thriving. Oh. And the nurse said, Oh, okay. And he gives me the IV and he gives me a little pump or something. I was like, Yum, 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 yes, she's alive. <laughs> and I was like, Actually, no, I still passed away. What the Beep. f was that? And he said it was a placebo, it was a saline injection. And I said, sir, my ankle looks like a U-turn. You better give me some beep, beep. Uh, And I don't know if you guys know this, but black and brown people are prescribed opioids at a lower rate than white people. So white people have a higher addiction rate to heroin. And I said to myself, huh, maybe sometimes racism's good? <laughs> I will say it's a double-edged sword. Let's say you're in a community where I worked in like Newark. You have patients that come in that you know are at high risk because of their environment mm -hmm. for developing an opioid addiction. If you're a good doctor, you should know that if you live in a white suburban community, you're also at Wait. a high risk. Okay, good, but yeah. But being aware of someone's risks and tailoring their medication plan is actually good. Okay. So in this case, the doctor that's assuming that because someone's white, they have a low or risk is factually inaccurate and therefore has led to worse outcomes. Hmm. So it's when biases work against you, not when racism works for you. Get what I'm saying? I do. Before major surgery, I asked if I could get something to take the edge off. I already had an IV in and I was like, you can give me a little something, something. We're running late. I was like freaking out and they said no. And then I started barking and then I got it. Then it went from like a scary day to such a fun day. <laughs> I was telling jokes. I did stand up for I everyone. would have rather you called me and I would have just held your hand. Uh, that would Some not have Some people helped. will say I'm a medication. <laughs> Okay, they're lying. I, I started walking in my sleep. I was living with my girlfriend at the time and I started having a recurring dream that there was a hovering insect-like jackal in our bedroom. I had the same dream, but it wasn't a jackal, it was you. <laughs> That's because I was there. Oh. <laughs> I did buy a book, it was called The Promise of Sleep, and I, I learned that there are 78 known sleep disorders, things that range from sleep apnea to night terrors to narcolepsy. Narcolepsy is terrifying because there are people who fall asleep at any time. I think there's more than 78. Sleep disorders? Mm -hmm. How many do you have? Primarily one. Insomnia? Yeah. 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 
anxiety-induced mostly. And I read about this thing called REM behavior disorder, where people have a dopamine deficiency. That's a chemical that's released from your brain into your body when you fall asleep. It paralyzes your body so you don't do what's in your brain. Interesting, I don't know if that's 100% proven or the leading theory. Mm -hmm. Basically, when you fall asleep and you enter REM stage, your muscles are supposed to become paralyzed so you don't move during this stage of your sleep while you're dreaming. That's why I don't hit REM. Ah. Tourette, 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 Tourette. Really? Yeah. So do you not feel refreshed when you wake up? Not very often now. Mm. Five years ago, I'm in Walla Walla, Washington, and I'm staying, which is a place, and I'm staying at a hotel called La Quinta Inn, and I fall asleep, and I, I have a dream that there is a guided missile <laughs> headed towards my motel room, and there was all these military personnel <laughs> in the room with me. I jump out of bed, so I decided in my dream, and as it turns out, in my life, to jump out my window. Oh, no. So there are two important details. One, I was on the second floor. Two, the window oh, was oh closed. God. So I jumped through a window and I screamed, ah! And it's like not like one of those action movies where the window gets blown up before you jump through it. No, yeah. He's literally flying through a window. And I got up and I kept running. <laughs> and I'm running and I'm slowly realizing I'm on the front lawn of La Quinta Inn <laughs> in Waya Waya, Washington in my underwear bleeding. And I'm oh. like, oh no. What does it say about him, maybe men, that it took him literally jumping out of a window to be like, maybe I should get some help for this. Well, that's literally <laughs> what I was gonna say. That like when people ask me, when is the time that you should see a doctor for like, That's the time. I would say one day before that. Yeah, but it's hard to predict sometimes. But that's, that's the definite line. And the next morning I flew back to New York and I did what I should have done in the first place when I saw the jackal. I went to a doctor who specializes in sleep disorders and, and, and I was diagnosed with REM behavior disorder. And so now when I go to bed at night, I take medication and I sleep, and I'm not making this up, in a sleeping bag up to my neck. Oh my God. And I wear mittens <laughs> so I can't open the sleeping bag. There's gotta be a better solution. That sounds so comfortable. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yes, it does. I'm struggling love to escape. Small spaces. Wrap me up like a burrito. Really? Yeah. With gloves that you're unable to open? Yeah, the problem is as a single woman, I they would then find me six years later. <laughs> like that's literally what I do like to babies when they, I know, when they scratch so. their faces. And then and then when you unzip babies in the morning, they go. <laughs> so like I said, I have Tourette syndrome. It's the best one! When I'm with other people with Tourette's, I pick up on their tics. Uh, that's pretty normal. So you're about to see my Tourette's gets worse when I watch him. Oh. Camera, watch him tell me. <laughs> this Twitch gets me in trouble. My roommate came home from work. I was like, dude. Our neighbor died. <laughs> <laughs> he said, did you kill him? <laughs> I was like, nah. <laughs> That's the same as I your have the pickup same, joke. It's, no, it's the my customs joke where he asked if I'm bringing anything illegal back uh, into the country, and I was like, no. <laughs> Click here for when Pam reads thirsty tweets to me. <laughs> Enjoy this one, follow Pam, and as always, stay happy. And healthy and fabulous. Yay. Yeah.